Hi, welcome back again. This is Michelle Markey and this is lesson number two on how to paint our Zentangle pumpkin. Um, we did most of the leaves earlier and one note that everyone should probably be aware of as you start doing these classes is that typically what you want to do is start with the items that are furthest away from you so that as your hand is moving across the fabric um, you're not rubbing a color that you may have already colored in and, and already set. Uh, all of this must be set with an iron and sometimes as you're running your hand back and forth the color can actually rub off on the side of your hand and it smears uh, onto your fabric. And typically what I have people do too is place a paper towel if there's no way around that to be able to avoid smearing it. The paper towel will take the color and usually it doesn't rub off on the fabric itself. Anyway, this is a very intricate pattern to color. So what I want to do in this lesson is actually show you a little bit more advanced technique than what we used up here as far as how to blend color together like we did with the yellow and the green. In this particular instance, we're going to come down here to what I, I refer to as bent teardrops or as most everybody in the quilting business knows them as, as feathers. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this sun yellow and I'm going to lightly color the entire feather. And I'm going to focus a lot of the yellow. I'm going to try to make the kind of bottom, say one-fifth, fairly deep in color with the yellow and just provide a little bit of color around the rest of it. Same thing with this feather down here. I'm going to come in, I'm going to color deeply in the V of the feather, and then as I move out, I'll just put some light color around. Now, if you go look under classes on my website, you'll actually see a finished picture of what this pumpkin's going to look like. You'll know that basically I've taken right here probably close to eight or nine different types of ink tense pencils, all various colors of yellows, oranges, tans, and reds. So back to our teardrop, what I want to do now is I would like to add some deeper yellow. And this one is called Sienna Gold. So just above where I kind of oh did a bit of that deeper yellow, I'm now going to come in and just shade a bit with this deeper gold color. And again, kind of blending it, but I'll do most of my blending, of course, when I use the fabric medium as we did with the leaves. And I'm going to do both of these about the same to where I'd say about a third of the teardrop is colored. And notice if you want, you can kind of bring it up the side. I actually did a lot of the yellow right here, and I'm going to put lay the gold kind of right next to it. Again, kind of gives it a nice blended color. And as we did with the leaves, you want to get that color right up to the stitching line. Okay, next color I will use is, let's see, we have this little short one is a tangerine. I'm going to come in here and just lightly kind of make a little circle of tangerine just to kind of give it an orange spot. This tangerine is fairly prominent throughout the pumpkin because as we know, pumpkins are usually orange. I'm now going to grab my, let's see, I'm looking for my burnt orange which is this one right here. And around the little ball of, of tangerine, I'm just going to kind of make a little U-shape worth of burnt orange around both of these. Kind of shading into the little circle of tangerine, but kind of also going on either side of it and blending it in with that gold. Let's make sure we get plenty here. You'll notice it is definitely a deeper color. 
Now I'm going to get to some of the more deep colors. This one is called Baked Earth. It's actually one of my favorites. I use this in so many. And again, kind of keeping that kind of U-shaped or half circle shape around the burnt orange. Just putting another layer there. Same with this one right here. Last but not least, I'm probably going to take my chili red. This is a, as it, as it sounds, it's kind of a deeper red. I'm going to just finish that off and, and make sure I'm getting right up to the stitching line on both of these. Okay. Well, you can tell already as, as I've been doing this, you can see how this is going to kind of blend and it's going to be a kind of a light to dark type of, of coloring. So now what I'm going to do is take my brush. I have my fabric medium. By the way, just so y'all know, I don't normally put my fabric medium directly onto my artwork. The reason being is, of course, you can spill it um, it can accidentally get in an area you're not ready to color. But for the sake of the video and so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm bringing it closer to me so that I can, I can um, get it wet. Now this is a rather small brush which I actually like to use when I'm doing blending. And I'm just going to start down here at the yellow and start working my way up. Um, I encourage that when you are doing blending like this, that you do start from the light and work to the dark. And you'll see here why in just a minute. If you see what I'm doing now, if I were to work the other way, you'd be pulling more of this red down into the gold. And you may want to do that. Certainly nothing wrong with it. But in this particular case, I prefer to actually go the opposite way. I want to take my gold and bring it up into my darker colors. Now, of course, as you can see, as we get into these darker colors, it really starts to pop. And I'm going to come around and with my red, bring it all the way around. And be careful, this is where this you can actually get off into the other areas that haven't been colored yet. Of course, with the colors that are being used in this particular pumpkin, it's really okay. Um, the, of course, key with all of this is you always want to work your light areas or your central areas first and then work your way out. And I'm going to try to bring this in just a bit so that you can see 